Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to make an album out of envelopes. I hope you'll stay tuned. It's fun. It's easy. Anybody can make this album and I hope you'll give it a try. So I was at Joanne Fabrics and they had this A7 card on sale. It's um, You get 50 of them for it's the cards and the envelopes. A7 means a 5 by 7 card in case you didn't know that. Of course no one knows what, why they make those letters. I don't know why. Why don't they just say 5 by 7 card. It's one extra letter right by. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, I bought this thinking I'll use it for an album for friends who are building their new home. So we're making a 5 by 7 album using uh, the envelopes in here and um, I used the cards in a unique way and I'll show you that too. The first thing I did, and we'll do one of these together, the first thing I did is I took my envelopes and there are nine of them. And what I did was I went around the outside edge of them with um, black soot, I'm pretty sure, distress stain black soot. That way I already had all of my envelopes distressed so I didn't have to worry about that and um, I'm using nine of them not because I wanted nine but because I, I'll show you it makes um, uh, the size card I wanted. But anyway, I left one so you could see the system of how you do black soot. You shake it a little bit to make sure that if there's any, you know, if it's old, if anything sticks to the bottom, you got that off. My bottle has been used for all these, so it's already shaken and stirred. That was a James Bond reference, wasn't it? Shaken, not stirred. Anyway, um, I'm just going to go around the outside of this side of the envelope, and same thing with this envelope. The reason I'm using this stain, I don't know if you can see how fast it works, but compared to inking envelopes, Inking envelopes to me is like watching paint dry. It takes forever. So I didn't want to do that. And I already had this um, stain. And so I thought I'll give it a shot. And it works like a champ. And if you miss an area, you go back over it. But that is how I did it. So I did all of my envelopes like that. To make this album, I used Helen Griffin, who is another YouTuber. I used her system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take six envelopes and we're going to glue them so that the they go like this. So the two are glued together like face to face so that the open side is away from each other. Okay? I'm going to use some of this scotch tacky glue and I'll tell you um, as in all things you know I just don't know what I'm doing when I'm when I'm opening bottles and I always seem to cut my tips too um, deep I guess we'll call them deep and so mine are always too um, the tips are not fine tips are always really super super uh, open. So that's my big problem with that is, ooh, I mean, it's shot glue everywhere. Um, so that's my big problem is I did that. So we're going to line these up. Wet glue works best for this because you're going to make sure that the two um, envelopes are exactly um, laying face facing each other exactly. The reason I went around the outside of this with the black soot is I wanted to use distress. Um, I want it to look not um, like cardstock. I want it to look like it was a little bit different than cardstock. Does that make sense? Anyway, so um, you'll need six of these. Six is all you need for your album, and you want to make sure that they are completely lined up straight. Okay, so then I'm going to do two more. Same way, like that, so that we can glue them so that they're even. And I'm pushing down on this glue bottle so that I'm not getting big gobs out. It looks like it's a lot, but in um, it's really just kind of... Um, just kind of a smearing of it. It's not super, super thick. Again, we're going to 
lay them down so that they're even with each other. And make sure from this angle. You don't want the glue to ooze out on this side like mine did. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. It's my saying for everything because clearly I don't want you to mess yours up like I always mess up mine. So when you do this, you're making sure that your faces are glued together and that they're really well adhered. You can use tear tape. You can use any kind of adhesive. I just like to use wet glue because it's faster and um, the faster the better. Especially when I'm showing you something like this on camera. We just want to make sure that you can see it fast and um, you know how to make something versus you spent 20 hours watching me make something that really shouldn't have taken that long to make because I use tear tape. If I use tear tape it will take a lot longer. Um, the reason that we have this piece in the middle, so what we're going to do is we'll insert another envelope over that and that's why we needed three others because we have three of these inside. So the next thing we're going to do is um, I have made, you're going to take uh, pieces of cardstock. Now this is what I did with the cards. I took pieces of cardstock that were an inch and a, and a quarter wide. I scored them on a half inch and three quarters inches and then I put tear tape on the back so that I have this little square. Hopefully you can see that. I have this little square on top and then uh, on the sides I have the tear tape. You got that? That's really important because this is how we're going to glue together our um, our pieces. I didn't. Uh, okay, here's another thing I did. I because I use my cards. My cards aren't as big as my envelopes, so this is not going to be as long as this. But it's only about a quarter of an inch short, and I didn't think that would make that huge of a difference. It might in the end, and I might end up crying about it, but. Uh, that's kind of the way it goes, right? Um, I'm going to put some of my black soot on these, and you're going to need five of these. You need uh, three to to glue these together, and then one for your front and back cover. So let's get our scrap paper back, and um, I'm just going to quickly black soot these up. I don't think you're going to see this part of it, but just to be on the safe side, I figured I might as well do it just because I want it to match the rest of the book. So let me do these and I'll be back when I'm done with all five of these. So what we're going to do, you when you cut your strips like this, it should be the length of your envelope. I, as I said, use my cards so it wasn't as... Um, it wasn't as smart as because it's not as long as as my um, envelope, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm also, I put a line of tear tape, but I'm also going to put some wet glue on this, and the reason for that is my tear tape doesn't go from top to bottom, and I want to make sure that this piece is really well adhered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put enough wet glue on there to lay it down. It serves as two purposes. One, it's going to make sure that it's well glued, but it's also going to make it so that I can move it around because this wet glue is going to make it so that my tear tape doesn't automatically adhere this immediately to to the um, base and then I'm stuck. You want to make sure your envelopes are going to open in this direction and you're going to have this piece going in this direction on your card. So we want to make sure that that top line is even with this part of our card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay that line as close as I can to the edge of my card and I'm going to center that quarter of an inch so it's between the two pieces and then once I get it in place. I'm not pushing down on it yet. I want to make sure that that this is the opening part of my envelope. Before I push this down, I'm you know verifying all the things I could have done wrong and that that is everything looks right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to really really press that down. That way we're sure it's not only going to be 
um, in the right place, but it will give me the little bit of wiggle room I needed during the process. Now the next piece that we're going to glue down is we're going to take the tear tape off of this piece and we're going to fold up on this fold. You want to be able to play with these folds on these papers so that when you lay your cards or your envelopes on them you can really tell where your line is and the best way to do it is to keep moving this kind of like to the side so that it's um, going to stay where you need it. And now some people use um, glue sticks for their second round of glue. Some people just use tear tape. I like to make sure my albums are as sturdy as I can possibly make them and so I use as many glues as I think I need and in this case I'm using scotches and um, my tear tape. Okay, so now we go to our second set of envelopes. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take this and you're going to line it up the edge of it on that and make sure that when you line this up you're also lining up the top and bottom of your envelope so um, I don't know if you can see this what I'm trying to do is make sure that not only is this part lined up on my on my tear tape but also that the two the top and bottom of my two cards that I just, well, my four cards that I just stuck together are in place. Okay, so those two are glued down and there is the piece between them. It's a little bit high, uh, higher on the, this piece than on this piece. The only thing we have to make sure of is that when we glue our next one in place, which we're going to do right now, that we make sure that we glue it so that it is exactly in the same spot. And I don't even know if you can see that. Can you see that spot right there? and how it's a little bit shorter on this end. We just need to make sure that the next one is adhered properly right there. The reason that we did the, that um, quarter inch between them is so that it gives your book some um, room to grow. So if she puts um, a picture on each page and then she writes journaling spots and puts the journal pages in there that she'll be able to make sure that her album is um, not, it's not going to get too chunky that she won't be able to make it work. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so now we're going to lay that line directly on the edge. I'm going to push that down so we can see it. Okay, we're going to lay this directly on top of the edge of that line making sure that it's centered top to bottom, side to side. Okay, so at this point we have our one, two, three sets of cards in there. Now we need two more of those, one for the front and one for the back. Same thing, you want to make sure that you've lined it up so that it's exactly the right um, it's the right dimensions and the easy one of the easiest ways to do it is by using the your fold lines I'm going to show you this if you move your fold line sorry I got a little glue there if you move your fold line so that this fold line is the one that's on top basically you can do this a lot easier because if you can see what I'm doing here that way my fold line is is lining up on the edge of my card and it's ensuring that my project is straight and that it's well glued down because I have it lined up so all in all you're only going to need four of these strip things that I just made and then that's our back. And we'll leave that for later for when we glue our back to it. So right now, this is what our book looks like. It's got um, all these pieces to hold it together and to bend it and, and to bend it so that we can keep adding and adding. And so let's do that. Let's do some adding. 
So when you're doing this, what we need to do is we need to attach our envelope to this. This is the two flaps that we glued together at the beginning. So that means we need to cut off the flap from these pages. Envelopes. I don't know what I'm calling pages. It's an envelope. So all you're going to do is line it up in your paper trimmer so that that line is right there. And we're going to cut all three of those real quick so that we're ready to glue them in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to slide this in just like that until it reaches its, until it reaches the, uh, the fold. Got that? And then when you want to, when you do that, you want to make sure that when you do that, that it's not wider than the other ones. It doesn't stick out more. If it does, you could always turn it into a, a, a pocket, but those are not going to be pockets. My other pages, my normal pages, will be pockets, but these ones I just inserted will not be. They're just going to be um, places for her to glue her, um, basically to glue her card or her photos on. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting glue underneath where that will reach and then I'm going to slide it in if I can all the way down on both sides and then I'm going to put a little glue under here. As I said, I could have made this into a pocket but I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to use my rag to wipe off my excess glue and make sure it's well adhered. You'll be much neater than I am. I'm doing this as quickly as I can because I'm doing it on video. The other thing is, is you'll have like these little end pieces. You might want to glue some of those down because um, they're sticking up, but I'm not going to do that yet because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with these. Oh no, I do know what I'm going to do with them. I am going to glue those down. Any of these little flaps that stick up, just put a little glue on them and stick them down like that. Just a little bit on the edge like that will do it. So the next thing I wanted to show you how to do is to, I cut those little seams off so we would have a place for writing and I thought I would just show you what I did. In the Graphic 45 papers that I'm using, it's from a set called Topography. I bought this stamp set that went along with it, and inside of it is this stamp that says, I think it says, what does it say, write your story? Yeah, write your story. It's like typography, if that, if that helps you. Anyway, um, I like that write your story, so what I did was I took those cards. Remember, these are all envelopes that were with 5 by 7 cards. So what I did was I cut the cards down to 4 and 3 quarters by six and three quarters so they would fit in here really well. Then what I did is I took this really old McGill Craftivity Fab Tab, no, File Tab 3 inch punch and I had to score it. There wasn't a fold. It says, it says on this that the, I don't know if it's supposed to have a line there or not, but trust me when I tell you, they were, there was no line there. So what I did was I scored them right there in the middle and then I glued them on to the sides of my cards and I did it so that they are staggered so that I have two that are you know at the top two in the middle and then this one will go at the end and so what I, sh I thought I'd show you is how I did the gluing because it's very simple but um, you know you might not you might not have ever done something like this so I thought I'd show you all you have to do you have to glue the bottom section on both sides but the top section and I'll show you as soon as I get this glue on here let me show you the top section where you know where the tab is you don't have to glue that on both sides because you're going to uh, it's going to squeeze together I'm just putting a little bit more in that center section to make sure it glues shut so then what I did is this I took the the one that I'm matching it to and I took this card that I don't have one on and I put this tab as close as I could in my mind to where the other one was and then I looked to see that I need to move it a little bit down to the, to the right to the left where do I need to move it I'm going to move this one a little bit to the right 
and see if that's in the right spot. Can you see that? I lined them both up and then I didn't really squeeze it yet and now I'm going to squeeze it and make sure that if there's any excess glue, the glue comes out and if there's, you know, I just want to make sure it's in place. And then what I'm going to do, because each one is the exact same thing and there are six of them for the six pages we cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one that goes to the front, then one that goes in the middle, one is at the bottom, stagger again, top, middle, bottom, and that way when I put them in, they'll be, they'll already be set up. Oh, and I rounded the corners with my corner rounder. I rounded it with this on the large setting so that all of my corners would be the same. And then this one's going to go in the center. Okay, we're good to go. Now, all we need to do is we're going to cover our pages. There's our books. And when you do this, these can go in as, as far as you want them to or stick out as far as you want them to. Let's do our cover so that we know we have that done next. Or should I cover the pages next? Because I have that ready to do. What I did was, this was kind of fun. I went to a really old um, dictionary and I found the word house and the word home and I pulled them out as neatly as I could out of the dictionary and made them, cut them to size. And I'll give you the dimensions of all of these in a second, but what I wanted to make sure of was that um, it fit on my page and that the word home was in the right place, you know, that it didn't look stupid that I had it in a crazy spot. So what I wanted to do was make it so that, hopefully, it's a quarter inch on all edges. And then what I did was I made sure that I took on the pages that weren't these, you know, the extra pages. I made it so that they all had, um, uh, like, they looked good together. So in this case, I'm going to put this piece here with this piece. Now, here's the thing you have to remember. I put these cards in here for a reason. I can't have glue anywhere near that. So what I want to do is I'm going to put my tear tape just on the right side of this one piece. I'll have to get a new tear tape roll. That one's out. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're only going to put tear tape on the right side of one of these strips. And you can do glue for the other ones, but this side you have to make sure is got tear tape on it because otherwise you might end up uh, gluing this, sh gluing the, that basically in. We don't want to glue that in, so I'm going to pull it out a little bit. And I'm going to put the tear tape on it like that, and, uh, and then I'm going to wet glue the edges of this. Then I'm going to just glue a little bit across this, just to make sure that our paper is well adhered. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, whoo, rolled it right on there. So then you're going to take this. We're going to center it up on the page like we did the other one. And ooh, that's another thing that's nice about the tear tape, or the wet glue, excuse me, is it's going to make it so that if I do lay this down a little bit crooked, I'll be able to move it. i got to move that a little bit, I think. This is uh, Graphic 45 paper that I'm using. It's not um, lightweight by any means, so you won't have any problems. Like if you do... Um, have to pick it up and move it. You won't have any problems if you use Graphic 45 papers. Trust me, it's good paper. I love Graphic 45 papers. It's just really quality, nice stuff. Okay, so then this one, if we don't have any worries, we can just wet glue this one down. Okay, so then we'll take this piece and we're going to put it right like that. Try to line it up with 
the paper you have on your left side and also with your book. So I'm cutting down my pa my cardboard and this is medium weight uh, chipboard is what they call it but it's a very it's a thick cardboard I didn't want to use well I'm not that's no that's a lie I tried to use the back of a pad of cardstock you know like um, 12 by 12 paper and this is how flimsy it was even with one piece of paper coating both sides so that's too flimsy. If you're going to do this, you need something that's going to be sturdy, that's going to actually be hard enough for an album. So it was eight and a half by eleven, and I cut it down to um, seven and a half, and then this size is going to be five and five eighths. So to do it, I lined it up at the five and five eighths mark on this side, and what you do is you have to go through both. You have to cut it and then flip it over. I've already done this, but I'll show it to you again and cut through the other side. Oh, there you go. And that's that's what you get. And then because you're cutting through both sides, sometimes you don't get a completely even cut. So I'll show you what I do in that case because I want to make sure you see that. And that is I just take um, one of the nail files that you get from the Dollar Tree and I just do that on the edges just so that they're kind of clean. Well, I'm going to do my covers over again, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see this in the light. It's the bricks that I'm trying to duplicate. They're gray in some light and, and like a brownish color in another. So I decided I would use this paper to go over my cardboard and I'm also going to because this paper is also much thicker I'm going to uh, try to score it around the edges to make sure that I don't have any problems with it cracking or breaking and that that is something that really happens often with this kind of paper now this is also textured paper and I wasn't sure if I wanted the texture on the side that is going to be face up and I think this is kind of a weird color it's almost like a grayish green I, I don't know it's weird and I'm not thrilled about that but I'm gonna go ahead and um, and cover this because uh, it's the first step to getting this cover done and then the next thing I'm going to do and this is probably going to sound crazy but I'm going to make some bricking on the front always so let me grab the things I need and I'll be right back I added some water to my paint and I think it's in pretty good shape now it's got some lumps in it but I'm hoping that it isn't too thin too watered down it's a little watered down but I can do, I think, a couple of coats of this. I'll just smear some on. My first coat doesn't really matter because obviously I'm going to repaint it. <clears throat> so I'm going to have Rich just uh, fast forward or cut this out so you don't have to watch it. I just wanted you to see that I am changing the colors of everything or maybe you didn't see any of the colors that I had originally or maybe I cut that all out. I probably cut it all that out because I probably thought that was dumb to leave it in because I clearly uh, wasn't going to be able to use red anything because my bricks were now going to be beige and gray. So that's what I'm doing now is fixing everything that was in fact red. It's not brick colored. It's a different kind of brick. Well it is brick colored but not the kind of brick that I envisioned when Rich said, oh, it's brick colored. Okay, our next step is to cover our album, or well, our, our cardboard, with um, paper. And I want to make sure that I do a good job of uh, not only centering it, because that's important, but also of making sure that I score it so the paper doesn't crack. So I'm going to use the tip of this paintbrush. Looks a little bit and like a little bit wobbly. And I'm just going to score. I'm sorry for the noise. 
I'm just scoring down the side to make sure that when we fold this back that our paper doesn't crack and that we have a nice oops missed a little bit there and that we have a nice um, fold and that we don't have any problems with our folds then the next thing I'm going to take this back you should be able to see the scores a little bit hopefully and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut the corners. Now when you uh, do, when you cover a book, you want to make sure that you uh, cut within maybe an eighth of an inch of your corners because you want to make sure that you can fold your corners back on your album and you won't have um, excess paper there. And I'll show you that when we get to it but it makes a big difference if you do this. So we're going to cut those off and then I'm going to get my glue. Well, actually I'm using tape runner for this. I'm going to use tape runner for part of it and then I'm going to use uh, wet glue in addition because you want to make sure when you do something like this that you don't um, that you don't under glue because it's not a card it's a permanent thing and if it's permanent you want to make sure that everything you put on it is has that intent you know that it's not going to be something that pulls off or is just kind of haphazardly stuck on it so we're going to make sure that our um, album really stays together that's my goal anyway and then you want to put a big piece through the center like that. Oops, I've got a piece. I'll just stick that right there. It just makes it that much stronger, stead you know, sturdier. We just really want to make sure that this thing stays together, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm putting that on the inside, and then I'm going to put more glue well in this case tape on the cardboard as well I'm not going to make you watch this uh, you know like I'm going to be taking off the backing I don't want you to have to sit and watch all of this I just wanted to show you all of the steps I'm taking so that you know uh, you know how to do this if you decide to make your own album you'll know how to do it so here's our plan I've got my paper and I've got my cardboard I'm going to lay this piece of the cardboard onto the uh, tear taped back hopefully straight it's my plan anyway I'm trying to line it up in the grooves that I made with the paintbrush if that if you recall that little step I did let's see if I can do this kind of straight okay now I put my tape on this side because I'm going to be gently, hopefully, folding this up. We want to make sure that my paper is lined up onto my cardboard. So you just want to do the same thing on all four sides. The goal here is so it doesn't crack and that you're laying it down like that. And then we just keep going around. Now I'm not going to make you watch me do the other one because I think that would be way more than you'd ever want to watch. So our very last piece is all laid in place. And if you have any overlap like this one where there's not enough glue, we can put some wet glue on those edges and or under those edges and um, glue them down. Or um, we could do some more. Um, we could do more with our tear tape, but I think it'll be fine. Just want to make sure that we got enough glue under there to hold it in place. And. If you don't know if it'll stay, because right now it's trying to jump off there, just take one of your uh, clothespins and put it on there like that, and that should hold it in place until it's glued 
um, until the glue is set. I'm going to show you something I'm doing in the book that I didn't know how I would be able to do this and hopefully I'm in frame. My goal was to put something like this in there but I didn't have any brads that were the right color so that's my first problem. I didn't have a way to put the brads in without making it so that I would lose the ability to have my pockets so I had that problem and then um, just the whole process just seemed almost impossible so I'll show you how I remedied it. First thing I have these brads that look like screws then what I did is I took them and I pulled them like this so that I could get as much of the brad legs away from the back of the brad as possible. Hold on, I got one more part again. There we go. Then I took my Tim Holtz bigger scissors, and these um, have, um, they are magnetized somehow, so the, the brads don't come off them, which is nice. And then I put it as close as I could to the brad, and then I'm going to have to take this out of camera, and I pushed it further down on the scissors. So you're about there in the scissors. And then I put it um, so I could uh, snip it without having anything fly um, toward the camera or I would look or and to avoid losing my screw top. So then you have these little edges left from the legs. So you got to push those down inside the back of the screw not a screw but it's a brad anyway you want to push those down like that so now I have four of those ready to go and then the problem again was the color I got one more piece I have to pound in there a little bit okay so then I took one of my distress crayons and this is kind of messy but this is how I did it and you might not be able to see this really well just uh, for a second but I took it and I rubbed it over the top like that and then I used my fingernail and got the stuff out of the center of it and uh, just kept rubbing it and hard to believe but it changed it I'll show you the color difference it changed it from this to that which is the color I needed so all I have to do then is finish my other three. So then I took, this is Stampin' Up! linen thread. I took it and I didn't need a lot for each piece and I tried to cut it on um, on one of the little t turns in these because they were really, it's hard to, it's hard to work with it because it doesn't like to straighten out very much. And then I um, pushed this through the ends. Then once I got my loop all the way through, then all I did was take the tail legs and pull them through the other end. And that's that. Then I'm going to have to do it to the other side. Like I said, you don't need much length. And that was another thing I figured out as I was doing it. this is I, um, no matter how short I cut them, it always seemed like they were still too long. So I'm just going to snip off some of these so that I don't have a big tail. Then what, what I did was I took my album, and if you make an album, I'm sure this will happen to you, you end up having pages where you're going to have a little bit of glue that's shiny and it shows up and it bugs you. And in my case, I'll show you the page, I had two pages still. I don't know if you can see here. Can you see that shiny right there? That bugged me. So I didn't like it and I wanted to get rid of it. So I took, clearly not that, here it is. I took my glue dots and some scissors and because I learned all about glue dots, I rolled this up with my thumb on this side. There's that little lever. You roll that up like that and I took off one of the glue dots and I put it Hold on, I'm going to just do this off screen so you can see it once I get my finger out of it. I rolled it up inside the screw and then took a little bit of tear tape and I ran it along the back of this 
just because I wanted to have some really good um, adhesive and I knew that this would not be a problem other than getting the backing off you know once you once you have it in place it'll hold so what I thought I would do when I did this is I would just put it over that shiny spot that I didn't like and then I would take my little screw and I would lay it as so that this the threads of the screw were going left to right hopefully I'm in frame and then I took my scissors and snipped off the excess. Well then once I did that what I realized was it wasn't enough glue dot to really secure the screw so I took another glue dot and I kind of rolled it up a little bit and I'm gonna make sure it's a little, a little bit and then I picked up the screw again and pushed it under like that just to ensure that it was really well adhered and it, it did work really really well it needs to be up a little higher and those two glue dots really secured those I'm not kidding you secured and for good and then I took another one and another glue dot hopefully I'm in frame and I get another glue dot off there Woo! look how that one's warm and I put it inside there and I laid this I tried to keep my ends of my twine or whatever you call that the linen thread I tried to keep that those ends as close together as I could and then push that down and I think on this one you can see better how it doesn't the screw doesn't really hold with one of these glue dots you really need to because it's so bulky with the thread underneath it so I took another one and kind of rolled it up and picked up my screw and then I just shoved it under like that and that way I made sure that it was um, straight and then I pushed on the center to make sure it was attached and then I'm not sure if I want to put the last one in the book or if I want to put it on the back cover or on the front cover and that one says the journey oh, the journey awakens the soul I thought that was really pretty when you're talking about building a house there is a big journey and this one says reality has limits imagination is boundless and this one says live the life you imagined and this one says possibility begins with imagination so they're all basically imagination and journey base which is what you have to have when you have a house so then I uh, I don't know if I showed you my F before because their last name starts with an F Shh, don't don't tell them if you know them anyway um, I painted it with some cheap craft paint that I had it was mucky so I had to add water and do a lot of stuff too and then I'm going to use some matte Mod Podge and um, you want to make sure if you're going to use Mod Podge you want to make sure that when you do it that you each um, coat you do in a different direction so this time I'm going to coat it up and down the next time I'm going to coat it side to side and the reason you do that is it shows lines if you've never done anything with Mod Podge it'll show all these lines even though I'm using a foam brush and you wouldn't think a foam brush would leave a bunch of lines it definitely does so I'm just going to paint this one really quick really quickly Jeez, my English is terrible today my next step is to make the brickwork on the front the one thing that's really key is I need to make sure that my F is the focal point and it's going to go kind of right there but I do want to make sure that the F also is surrounded by brick and I might put a little brick on the F I haven't decided that yet but I, what I want to do is I'm going to use modeling paste it's a deco art media modeling paste and I'm going to make a couple blobs of it because I'm going to be using it um, like all over and I thought I would use these tattered angel sprays with it and they'll probably go all over but uh, this one is called cardboard 
and this one is called Boardwalk and so um, I don't know if you've ever shaken these but it's better if you shake them like a bell rather than up and down because if you ring, like, shake them like a bell would be wrong the, uh, the, um, in the um, tube is that what you call it? Yeah, the tube doesn't get jammed as much. A couple sprays in here. My colors of my brick are a kind of a beige tone and a gray tone. That's a good one. I like that color a lot. Then I have these stencils from Doris. Uh, no, I made that up. They're a Diane Wakely Ranger Media Stencil called Essentials, I think. We're going with that. And it had these bricks in the middle, and that's what I wanted to use were them. I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to color a little bit more with that gray. Going with more gray. Okay, so this time I only want to hit it here and there with the gray. And then let's see if we can wipe that off. When you're ready. Oh, I think it's a little bit frisky. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, do, I think, a little bricking on the back. I, you've seen me brick, so I mean, you got the idea of it. I don't, I don't know if you want to be tortured by watching me brick, but um, I think that's my plan. And I'm going to brick most of the front, I think. Now that I've done it, I think I'm going to wait and then do this section, then the top section, then, you know, do section, 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 section as I go. So each color will be, or each section, the colors will be different. It'll be unusual. I hope it looks okay. That's my plan anyway. So that's where we stand. I'll, I'll come back when I've done, finish the bricking. I finished the fronts of the covers and I'm going to put these rocks on the back and I I cleaned up well I wanted to show you what I had to do with the back you have to kind of roll off any of the um, molding paste that gets on the back you have to get this off the edges because you're uh, it's kind of waxy and I'm afraid that nothing will stick to it here is the back of the first one and I am going to put a pocket back there I think so that we'll be able to um, put extra fo photos or notes or whatever in those I don't know if there's one way it's up or not The other thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting or putting a uh, corner, these corner pieces on the edges so that they're protected. I think I'm going to put the album together first. And the way you do that, I've already put uh, some strips of tear tape on the back. We want to line this up with the top fold which is right there so we want to I'm going to push this down and then I'm going to lay it about like that and see how good that is as far as being centered and then I'm going to put that don't forget I'm going to put that um, um, pocket on there too so that will cover up some of my problems also and we're going to do the back cover. No, I don't think that's straight. I'm trying to get the front and the back straight. 
So I'm going to use this to wrap around my album, and you'll get the gist of it in a second, but I wanted to make sure that if my album stretched to its widest, if, I, if you do this and you stretch it all the way, it's about one and a half inches wide. So I want the middle section one and a half inches to be a scored. So I'm going to start at one and three quarter inches. And I'm going to score on every score line I can until I reach, let me make sure I did that right, one and three quarters, yeah. So then, I'm just going to keep going until I get to three and a quarter inches, and then I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm not, I'm not pushing super, super hard. This is a thicker paper, and it has a tendency to crack. And if you put this it, as your album cover, and it's the part that bends, like I said, it's the binding, then what happens is it will continuously be folded, open, close, open, close. So you want to make sure that when you do this that it won't do that because that's what all these scores are for. It will make it so that it bends back and forth. I might be going over the same ones a few times because I'm getting a little confused about which ones I did and which ones I didn't do. But that makes it so that the paper is really, really flexible. See? So that's our plan. Then I have uh, Tim Holtz. I gotta find my package that it came in. It's called Tim Holtz Textile Surfaces. I really like this, but it wasn't long enough to cover my whole album. You know, the front to back. No, top to bottom. So I thought what I would do is put a piece of it kind of over that section and glue them together, then when I put it on my album, when I put the whole thing on the album, it will make it so that it's kind of a neat looking texture rather than being kind of weird. So what I need to do is I need to just cut this so that it's uh, the same width as my five inch paper. And um, there are some wonky spots on this, so I want to uh, cut the edges off of them first. Before I cut the final cut to make it five inches, I just want to make sure these edges are nice and clean. I've ruined a bunch of things in this process trying to figure out a cover. It is adhesive backed. Okay, let's see if we can take the adhesive off without ruining it. Let's see if I can do this without completely destroying it. I can see now why it was on clearance because it's really hard to deal with. Because you're pulling it, every time you pull this backing off, you're pulling it out of shape. Well, I got the end lined up. That's pretty good. And I got this edge where I need to take the paper, the, the um, excess off. I don't think it looks too, too bad. And it's nice and bendy. I'm going to trim that little bit right there. I know exactly where I need my line to be because there's the very first one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put tear tape on this on both sides. And then I'm going to have Rich cut out it, um, me taking the backing off because it takes forever. And we get our wet glue. And we're going to make sure we put wet glue everywhere, including where there's um, tear tape, because this is guess what's going to really hold it in place, hopefully. You don't want to have this center section glued to anything. Then I'm going to put glue on this. So then we want to line this up so that our first line is at the edge of our album. 
and that it's straight. Flip it over. Don't forget, you don't want to glue this to anything that's um, scored. You want to make sure that everything that you scored is free floating basically right now. One of the most important parts of uh, doing an album like this is protecting the corners. So I bought these little um, kind of brass looking plate um, corner covers and um, it'll all be in the information below. And what you do is you just put it on your book on the inside like that and then you take this is how I do it. I take pliers and you push down on it as hard as you can. It's not hard to do. If I can do it, pretty much anybody can do it. And then you have to do both the top and the side. And that's that. So I have all four of those on, secure and for good. And while I was doing that, I looked, and you can see this is starting to come unglued. So, I mean, if you push down on it, it re-glues, but that's not what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for something that's going to stay. Oh, and I took um, a little, these little circles that you, I think they're called O-rings that you get for jewelry. These aren't really sturdy, and I'm not really excited about them, but I wanted to stick that uh, key on there because on the front... I have like a key hole that goes on the front. The other thing I did, well, I had Rich do, is I used this punch, and I it's it makes photo corners, and I had enough made so that if they wanted to put a photo on every page that they could, and how you do this is it has these little folds in them, and you just fold them down like this, and on both sides and then you put it on your edge of your photo and then you just glue your photo down with these on all four corners. It's simple to do but it really has a big impact because it makes the photo look a lot more finished and part of the album. So I have every color or every design I have in a baggie so that if they want to they have all the different patterns that they need to make that look good. So I'm ready to put my uh, decorations on the front and be finished. Finally, you probably can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm trying to put some glue on the back of this. I do have tear tape on it, but I wanted to also put regular glue on it as well. I'm going to put it right there. That's straight. It looks kind of straight. Then the F... I have uh, tear tape on the back of it as well, but I also want to put wet glue on it because um, two types of glues are better than one. Okay, I think I'm going to put that F right there and press down on it so that it stays. And then I have another one of these. I thought it, this was kind of cool because it says enjoy the journey. I've got my little screws and I'm going to my glue dots and attach them with glue dots because this works really well. There, I think, is the finished album. So I thought I would show you my album. It's finished and I did one additional thing that I didn't show on camera and that was I took one of my stencils and my alcohol markers and I covered the F with a uh, gray alcohol marker. I really like it. I think it really changes the whole look of the album. Anyway, um, so the front of it has the little lock on it and then I hung the key from the back binding and then inside the front cover you know we made that pocket and then we have these pullouts and it's very humid today so the pullouts are kind of sticking there's one and then here's another one and then here's another one and they all say write your story on them so that they understand what they're there for 
I didn't put one in every uh, page, and then I live the life you imagined. I put some of those in there. Reality has limits. Imagination is boundless. When you're building a house, I'm assuming there's a lot of imagination that goes into it. So that's what I went with was the imagination idea. Life is about creating yourself. I like that one. And then, let's see, There's I thought there was one more in here. Maybe it's the one on the front cover. Enjoy the journey because, you know, doing a house is a big journey. I hope you enjoyed this, that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because, you know, I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.